Three-time Tony nominee Mark Kudish has stepped into the Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winning musical Finding Neverland. I'm here at the Lund Fontan Theatre to talk to the star about his dual roles as Charles Froman and Captain Hook. Hey Mark Kudish. Hi. Thanks for inviting us into your pirate's lair. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty dark in here, pretty cool. Is that your uh, skull and crossbones? No, 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 that's, that's Kelsey's. I, I wanted to leave something in the room um, that was him, because I think that something should always remain of him in the room, given the fact that he created it. So you've stepped into Finding Neverland. Yeah. How is the land of Never? I really love it. And honestly, I, I, I didn't know what I was going to necessarily expect. And then the invitation came to join the cast when Kelsey was going to finally like leave. And um, I'd worked on one of the first versions of the show years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the original Hook years ago. Wow. Now, the show is dramatically different than when I was working on it. What appealed to you about it? I love the story of J.M. Barry. I love his story. It's a very interesting relationship that he had with Sylvia and um, the, the boys. I just had always been taken by him for a lot of reasons. Froman, I, I've always known who Charles Froman was, his producer. Mm -hmm. um, the guy was amazing, and he's a part of history that we have unfortunately forgotten and we should remember. I love that there's a duality to this part. I yeah. feel like that suits you so well. Well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, but it's interesting because it originally Froman and Hook were not connected. Hook was connected to other characters that are no longer in the show. and. I would say for good reason. And um, I wasn't even sure how it was going to work with Charles Froman being connected to Hook because Froman was like a father figure to J.M. Barry mm -hmm. in his life. They were very close. And I thought, well, I mean, Hook is very adversarial, obviously, and certainly for Barry, um, a deep part of his consciousness. And it was fun finding how those two connected when I was originally working on them not connecting that way. I got to take advantage of other people's creativity and step into something where they'd already gone through that process mm -hmm. and see the great work that they had done and take advantage of it, quite frankly. And I loved it. And I didn't know how I was going to feel about that because, you know, I'm a pain in the butt. You know, right. very opinionated pain in the butt. <laughs> and like, it was great to step in and go, wow, the book is really good. And oh, gee, I really like a lot of this music. And It's like moving into a furnished house. I'm telling you, but a furnished house that you walk into and you go, I like the style of it. <laughs> and like, slipping into this company has been so effortless, surprisingly effortless. And you get to sort of explore some things that you maybe have done before. You you're often play characters with authority, and you're yeah. also really great at comedy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> well, are. Look, I like playing characters. I always say I've made a career on playing the foil. Not the villain, but the foil. Um, let's say the antagonist, but that doesn't necessarily mean a bad person. It's the subconscious that we all carry. For me, I mean, you know, I, I'm happy to put my subconscious on my sleeve and go out there and do naughty things. <laughs> but the, the real joy is Froman and finding that tension to offer Barry that eventually explodes in Hook, but that is still his closest ally and friend and father uncle figure do you know mm -hmm. but still cre but but still demanding he look in a mirror now you're coming off of hand of god yeah which was great to see you in a play on broadway something yeah. that we haven't seen before that was your is that was your first play on broadway that was my first play on broadway on broadway and that was a very much, even though it, was, it had some puppetry in there, it was very much an adult piece. Oh, it's an adult piece. <laughs> yeah, it's an adult piece. It's an adult piece. <laughs> and you're coming here where there are a lot of kids. Like, let's, yeah. let's compare and contrast those stage door experiences. Children's stories are the best stories for all of us. Hmm. If that were not the case, we would not be enraptured with Harry Potter. Sure, like, Star Wars. It's, it's Star Wars, exactly. They're all simple fables from a childhood point of view. Mm -hmm. With universal would, themes and a hero. We would not hero. all be scared of the child catcher. Right. And adults are just as afraid of the child it's catcher because creepy. it appeals to that, that, that very simple thing that lies in all of us. And, and, and simple does not necessarily mean easy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's fun doing that because again, you're, you're, you're appealing to a very wide range of audience member in terms of their age and their life experience. But all of us carry the same emotions. So, you know, depending on experience, mm -hmm. the emotional reaction is going to be different. But even with Hand to God, we would get younger kids. Like, it was a very young audience for that. Really? Oh, yeah. 
A very young one. When what I say on, I thinking? mean like, you know, the starting age, we would always say to people, you know, 14 and up. Yeah. Because, you know, kids today have a lot. They're exposed to a lot. So, you know, I'm not going to treat them less. Right, not talk down to them. Nah. So, you know, and it but was But when great. you meet kids at the stage door, how is that experience for you? I mean, it's pretty good, you know, especially when, you know, like you meet a little girl and then, you know, the father's like, do you know who that is? <laughs> And they're like, that's Captain Hook. And then you just sort of see them <laughs> just move back a little bit. But even last night, it was so sweet. Um, my buddy Ayal brought his daughter with him, Olivia. And uh, Alfie was really cool. <laughs> Alfie um, said, do you want to meet Tinkerbell? And Olivia's face just sort of lit up. And um, he introduced her to the, know, light? the light of Tinkerbell. And he let her see the light, but didn't let her get too close. And he's like, OK, I've got to put her back now. Oh, that's amazing. And she was just like. Absolutely. Right, because the magic is real. But it was really, yeah. you know, and seeing a kid react that way is really wonderful. I mean, there's genuine magic in the world still when you can see a kid that lit up. Well, we have to run, but I have to ask you about our favorite bustle fluffer, your wife, Shannon yeah. Lewis. <laughs> How's she doing? Listen, my wife is, um, she's very good. Um, she's choreographing now, which yeah. I'm absolutely thrilled about because she is a really good choreographer. Are you guys going to work together again? I mean, yeah, sure. I, if she's choreographing something and I get hired to do it, do you know? Maybe she could put in a word for you. <laughs> well, either that or, you know, <laughs> either that or be like, mm. No. No, but I mean, she's, she's, she's about to um, showcase a couple of uh, numbers from a project that she's working on, so it's, it's really great, you know. Hey, thanks for letting us come in here. Oh, sure. And check it out. Yeah. It's great. Thanks. I'm so glad you're doing this. Oh, so am I. So am I. I hope you're having fun. <laughs> I'm having a good time. <laughs>